Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Joe Wiedele from James Cook University, and I'm here to welcome you and our speaker this afternoon, um, Professor Michael Bird from James Cook University. Michael trained as a geologist at the University of Sydney and the Australian National University. He received his PhD in 1988. Afterwards, I believe he has been a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Western Ontario in Canada, returned to Australia as a research fellow um, at the Australian National University, I believe. He was an associate professor here in Singapore, and this was here on campus, I believe. Um, a professor at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, and since the beginning of last year, he is a Federation Fellow and Professor at James Cook University. And the presentation this afternoon is on environmental change in Ireland, um, Southeast Asia, since the last age, ice age. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. It is actually nice to be back in Singapore. Every, every time I get out at Changi Airport and I get in a taxi and I get onto the ECP and come down, there's the rain, trees and what have you. It's kind of like coming home. And, and, and as was just mentioned, I actually used to work about 300 metres in that direction. And I uh, used to use one of the engineering labs that's about 50 metres in that direction. So it gives me great pleasure to, uh, to come back here and talk a little bit about the work, some of which I did uh, while I was uh, in Singapore, and which I've subsequently followed up uh, elsewhere in Scotland and, and now at JCU. There is a cast of thousands behind this as well, of uh, students and postdocs and things that have worked with me on this, but I won't labour the point. Now, this is sort of a uh, halfway house between a research seminar and a public lecture, so more, more context than I would put in a research seminar, and probably less context than I would put in a public lecture, so I have no idea whether I'll get the balance right in this. But what I want to talk about today is, is the, long, the long time frame, really. Uh, the last glacial period, the last several tens of thousands of years, and what this place was like during that time. So we'll start with uh, a little bit of a general introduction to biodiversity and, and insular Southeast Asia, or island Southeast Asia. And what we do know, or what we think we might know, about past environments in this part of the world. And then I guess the research guts of the talk is down here. Uh, how you can use cave guano, that is the excrement of birds and bats, to say something about past environments. I've spent a lot of time in the last few years trying to figure out how you work with what is essentially a new uh, paleoenvironmental proxy. And, and I, I think quite useful. And then talk about what that means. So uh, to start off with some of the background, I mean, you only need to look around out the window to see that this is a humid tropical environment. And uh, it was covered by rainforest, at least until it was, uh, at least until industrialization. We have five major islands, but 18,000 smaller islands in this area. And it goes up to the top of Mount Kinabalu and down into the trench south of Jogjakarta, you've got about 10,000 metres worth, worth of environmental niches to occupy there if you're a plant or an animal. So there's, there's, a, there's a fair few niches that you could inhabit if nothing ever changed in Southeast Asia, by virtually any measure. It's one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. So if you look in the ocean, that big red dot there is the highest diversity of organisms in the marine environment. If we look, I think this is um, vascular plants again, very high diversity here. And this has been sort of acknowledged in the development of the, the hot spot concept of, of Myers and, and Co. And you will see there's three hot spots actually here, another one up there. It's basically all hot spot, it's all biodiversity hot spot. How did this come to be? If we now drop sea level uh, by 120 metres or so, this is what things look like for a good portion of, of uh, history in this part of the world. So we know we have Wallace's line, which separates the, uh, the tigers and the rhinoceroses and so forth on this side, from this joined continent of Australia and Papua New Guinea called Sahul. 
And in between, also on, on this side of the line, we have typical Asian faunas. 